Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to apply the law on discharge of contract to a scenario. In this tutorial we're actually going to be looking at a full contract scenario. We're going to look at the sparkling windows question. We're going to recap the law on discharge of contract so that we can pull out all of the issues from this scenario. And then we're going to look at the idea structure as it specifically relates to discharge of contract in order to look at a model answer on how we would get a really nice answer to this question. So as always, let's start by reading the scenario so we can see the situation that we're looking at. So Sparkling Windows Limited is an industrial window cleaning business based in Wrexham. Sparkling Windows Limited entered into a contract with Lisa Public Relations to clean the windows of her company office block. First impressions are very important in the public relations industry. The following clause was included in the contract. In the event of failure to clean the office windows as required, Lisa Public Relations will be entitled to terminate the contract with immediate effect. On two occasions between January 2012 and November 2012, Sparkling Windows Limited failed to turn up to clean Lisa's offices. On each occasion, this was blamed on the loss of a member of staff. And in December 2012, Sparkling Windows Limited claimed that the problem had now been solved. Three months later, Lisa found that her office had not been cleaned, although all the other windows had been. She was fed up and relying on her clause in the contract terminated with immediate effect the window cleaning contract. And you're being asked to advise Sparkling Windows Limited. Now, this question phrasing doesn't tell you to advise them on discharge of contract, but hopefully in the exam that would have been obvious that this is a discharge question because the very end sentence says she's fed up and relying on a clause terminated with immediate effect. So discharge of contract, if you remember, relates to the circumstances in which the contract is brought to an end. And she's terminating the contract, she's bringing it to an end. Um, so we need to advise them on discharge of contract. So this would be a really good point for us just to do a recap of discharge of contract. Now, this is a huge topic. So I really urge you to watch my separate video tutorial on discharge of contract, in which I go through all the rules and all of the cases in detail so that you can get it all fresh in your mind before you come to try and apply it, because that will make it all seem much more straightforward to you. But we will do a quick recap here. So there are a number of ways that a contract can be discharged. Discharge by performance discharge by breach, discharge by agreement, and discharge by frustration. And because there's these four ways, that's what makes the topic quite large. There's a lot of cases to know here as well. To begin with, discharge by performance is what we all want. In an ideal world, a contract will come to an end. It will be discharged through performance where both parties have fully performed their contractual obligations. And that's what we want. But sometimes it might be the case that one party doesn't fully perform the contract. If the non-performance by one party amounts to a repudiatory breach, i.e. a breach of condition, the other party will be released from their obligations. We looked at the case of Cutter and Pound, which gave us the general rule on performance, a really harsh rule, actually. And the rule said that if a contract required performance in its entirety and the party didn't complete it precisely and exactly and entirely, they were entitled to nothing. But that was very harsh and we've sort of moved away from that um, over the years. And now we look at whether there's been substantial performance. And remember, we always compare Honig and Isaacs with the case of Bolton and Mediva, because whether there's been substantial performance or not is, of course, subjective. There are also severable contracts. These are nice and convenient for us, because if, for example, a contract says £10 per jumper, and they're supposed to be making 100 jumpers, but they've only made 50. We know that they're entitled to £50 because it's a severable contract. It's £10 per jumper. So that can be quite helpful. 
Um, there can be acceptance um, of partial performance. I should have said part performance on the slide. I've just added that in. So you can accept part performance, um, but also you can't prevent performance and then claim for breach of contract. And that's logical, I think, from Clanch and Coburn. We can also discharge a contract by breach, and that might be actual breach, where one party has, in fact, breached the contract, or anticipatory breach. And this is where one party indicates that they're not going to be able to fulfil their obligations under the contract. And it's advisable, if you remember, from the case of Frost and from the case of Avery, that as soon as you get wind that the other party might breach in the future, you should take action at that stage because otherwise the contract might be frustrated in the meantime. There can also be discharge by agreement, bilateral where both parties agree, or a unilateral discharge where one party is um, agreeing to discharge the contract and it only really benefits the one side. The final way of discharging a contract is by frustration, and this is quite a big area. Now, it is possible in the exam that you could get a scenario or an essay just on frustration, because it's quite an interesting area, and there's a lot to it anyway. So you won't necessarily get a scenario with all of these in. Um, it might just be on one, one or other of them. So frustration then, if you remember, is a contract that subsequent to its formation and without fault of either party is incapable of being performed due to an unforeseen event or events resulting in the obligations under the contract being radically different from those contemplated by the parties to the contract. And at the present time, um, coronavirus is very much in everyone's mind. And coronavirus has frustrated a lot of contracts. Lots of holidays have had to be cancelled. Flights have been cancelled because of the global pandemic. And that's a really nice example of something that is not due to the fault of either party, but it's stopping a pre-agreed contract from being performed. And there are different ways that frustration can happen through impossibility, um, illegality, commercial sterility. And in a situation where you have got frustration occurring, the Law Reform Frustrated Contracts Act 1943 sets out what will happen in terms of reimbursing people for deposits, etc., that have been made prior to the frustrating event occurring. So that's a really quick recap. Um, because we're looking at a full scenario today rather than a mini scenario, I want to crack straight on with trying to pull out some of these issues from the scenario. Now we've had that little recap and, in, and discharge is a bit fresher in our minds. So let's identify what potential discharge we've got in this scenario. So I'm going to start by considering performance. So has the contract been discharged by performance? Well, sparkling windows were supposed to be um, cleaning the windows, but we can see, and I'm going to highlight as I would in the exam, on two occasions here, they failed to turn up. And that's been blamed on the loss of a member of staff. And in December 2012, they said the problem had been resolved. And then three months later, she found her office had not been cleaned, but other windows had. So what we've got here is that sparkling windows have been performing the contract, but not entirely, not fully. Have they done substantial performance there? And that's the issue that we'd have to consider with Honig and Bolton and Mediva. Has there been breach of contract? Well, when we look at the scenario, it says that if it's not cleaned as required, that's going to end the contract. And you could say here that if they're cleaning the windows and we know that um, it says here first impressions are very important, to the public relations industry. So the fact that they're not cleaning the windows as required seems that maybe there has been a breach of the contract. Possible to say that it's been um, terminated by agreement. Well, you can see here that it says there's a term of the contract that in the event of failure to clean, 
Lisa Public Relations can terminate the contract. Now, that seems to be a unilateral agreement, and it doesn't seem that Sparkling Windows have given any consideration for that, so that might not be relevant to us. The final possibility is, has it been frustrated? Well, Sparkling Windows are saying that when they've not been able to clean the offices, that's because of loss of members of staff. So they might try and say that the contract has been frustrated through impossibility because they don't have the staff. Although that argument probably won't work because cleaning Windows staff, probably not that specialist. We don't need that particular member of staff. Replacements could be found. OK, so we've pulled out some issues there um, based on the recap we've done. Let's have a look at how we would use IDEA to write that up. So we start with identifying that our claimant in this case, Sparkling Windows, needs to be advised on whether their contract with Lisa Public Relations has been discharged. We then define what discharge is. So discharge is where a contract is brought to an end. Where it's discharged, each party is freed from their continuing obligations, and it can be discharged in those four ways. And you're then going to explain the four ways with all of your cases. So that's basically your summary sheet. And then, just as I've talked through with my highlighter, we need to consider whether there's been a discharge by performance, by breach, by agreement and by frustration. Now, on my next slides, and it's on two slides today because we're looking at a full scenario, so it's taken up more space, I've got a bullet point answer. So you might want to be freezing the video so that you can have a read of this as I go through. Mine's very bullet pointy. You will write in full sentences. You can ignore the ones. That's just a rough mark scheme for using in class. So I've identified Sparkling Windows wish to know if their contract's been discharged. I've defined it. And then look at this big explanation, gone through the four methods with all of my cases, which I would explain fully. Now, on my next slide is my application. And what I've done here is I've used blue to show the different ways of discharging a contract. So you can see that I've gone through each in order. And again, you may want to pause here so you can have a close look at these. So the first issue is whether there's discharge by performance. Windows have done, sparkling windows have done some performance. Look at that, two knots. Um, some performance, but it's not exact and precise, Cutter and Pal. It might be that there's been substantial performance, as in Honig, but that's going to be decided by the court, Bolton. I've put, it does seem inadequate performance here. Yeah, they've not um, done enough, so it's not been discharged on the basis of performance. Has there been agreement to discharge? Well, Lisa put that clause in her contract, but it was unilateral. Sparkling windows haven't given any consideration for that term. Third issue, has there been a breach? Sparkling windows have failed to perform their side of the contract, so Lisa may well be able to terminate and commence proceedings for damages. Fourth issue, frustration through loss of staff could be possible. But as I've said, cleaning is not a particularly specialist skill which requires particular members of staff. So it's unlikely that the contract will be frustrated through impossibility. So I've concluded by saying that in this case, it's most likely that the contract has been discharged through a breach of a term, which was very important to a PR company. That's the most likely situation. So you can see I've applied just by going through the different ways of uh, discharging a contract as they apply to sparkling windows. So I hope that's been helpful in showing you how to apply all the different types of discharge to a scenario. Do bear in mind it is possible to get a scenario just on frustration where there might be lots of potentially frustrating events.